What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box? In me, in me, in me, me. What's in the box? It's a vortex. So, I actually got this from a place you wouldn't expect to get it from, which was Trappy at TBS, Team Black Sheep. That's nice and shiny. So, let's get her open and see what's inside. I actually ordered this on uh, Thursday of last week, and it's now Monday. So, not bad to get it here. If, not, if they'd have gotten them on the Wednesday, I would have had this last week, but uh, unfortunately they got them Thursday, and Trappy said he had them, so uh, there was no pre-orders on his website, it was just literally, I've got them, if you want them, buy it. So, I bought one. Uh, I just had to pay the delivery driver uh, £46 something import duty, which uh, I knew I'd get stung with. So, that's that. Whip her open. Usual stickers that you get with like your video transmitters and things. Flight tested by Immersion RC and the guy's actually signed it himself. That's kind of neat. Jerome. Jerome flew this quad. I hope you flew it well, Jerome. Ooh, come on, get out. So oh, there it is in its folded form. The um, red plastic isn't as bright as I thought it was uh, going to be. Let's have a little look. Yeah. The locking mechanism reminds me of um, who was it? Steady Drone, when they brought out their locking arms, but they plastic clips were always breaking. I mean, they would, they would break as soon as you tried to use them. I think they, they did improve them over time, but that's what this reminds me of, because it was also red plastic. Not bad. Let's uh, see what else is in the box. <clears throat> Another plate there. Some extra props. They actually send you uh, 50 30s, I think it is, yeah, 50 30s. An antenna. Looks a little bit more beefed up than the usual antenna that you get with Immersion RC equipment. Uh, and a couple of spurs. So we've got some rubber isolation mounts, some, I don't know, side skirts, some of the C clips, uh, and just various bits and bobs that are inside the machine. Hmm. So. I guess that was an unboxing, there's nothing else that's, that's all you get really. Uh, let's take a closer look at the machine itself. Immediate thing that I notice is the camera mount system. It's um, a little bit weaker than expected, it's just on one hinge here. As you can see, just hinges up and down on that top hinge inside there. Um, it's got enough grip in it to angle it into the right position without the vibrations making it fall down. It shouldn't get too much vibrations anyway because this uh, camera is actually isolated as well on the top. I did think you got the um, the, the GoPro uh, mount with this. Um, maybe I just uh, misread that. Uh, you got the T motors on here, 1806, 14, 2300 KB. So this batch wasn't in the ones that were branded with the immersion on them. Bit of a nasty scratch on that one. Uh, I'll stick the antenna on and uh, we'll power it up for the first time. Unfortunately, um, <coughs> my receivers won't work with this. Um, I'm waiting for my signal converters to come so I can use the single um, S bus type receiver. So I have my Fat Sharks here, and uh, as you can see, we've got the built in DVR so we can see what comes up on the screen. Uh, I'm going to see what a 4 cell. Uh, 1600 milliamp turnergy looks like in this. Fits pretty secure. Um, if I do have a forward impact, then this will slide into the, the rubber mounts and the antenna here. Take the lens cap off. DVR's on. 
Power up first time. Well then. And yes, we have the Vortex um, TX setup wizard ready to go. Sensor all controls, blah blah blah. But obviously, I haven't got a signal converter to uh, to set this up right now. So, hmm, bit of a bummer really. All our LEDs on the back. I think anyone that's seriously into flying and flies with anyone else should have LEDs on the back. It's um, definitely helpful when you're flying along to be able to spot your uh, fellow competitors and also uh, follow them. Um, I flew with people that don't have the LEDs on the back before and I've actually crashed into the back of them. So um, this is a, a plus point for me. I'm glad that that's actually already included in there. So the Allen keys that you use on this are one and a half mil, which is a bit of a shame. I haven't got a lot of these uh, one and a half mil drivers. Let's have a look at the insides and see how easy it is to actually take apart and see what components may be modular that we can swap around uh, should we break any of it. Just out of interest, I probably will fly this using my 1300 milliamp. Oh, what's that? Okay, so there's a tensioner here. You see this aluminium that you push in and it pushes down on the, keeps the VTX pushed down underneath. See how it bends and pushes down. So I've took out all of the main small screws and then you can just see this uh, standoff here. That is also attached, so we need to take that off. And then that is looks actually like it is a two mil. It's just inside here. So my one and a half mil screwdriver that we've been using is too small for that particular screw. Disconnect the camera at the rear, like so. Twenty-four screws to uh, to remove. Let's take a quick look inside. Very simple, very neat inside. Changing these side skirts uh, wouldn't be a huge job. You wouldn't, in fact, have to take off the whole top plate to do them. Just take off the four screws. There's not a, a whole lot really to see inside. It's very, very basic. So this tensioner sits here and is tightened and pushes down on here keeps your VTX in place. Now this SMA connector could get snapped off very easily in a crash. Uh, so I'm not a big fan of that being integrated into the board. Hopefully it's nice and strong. Everything's braided. You can see that our cables here are braided. Let's take the uh, flight controller off, unscrew it and just have a quick nosy underneath. Just the four nylon screws to hold the flight controller on and then there is a ribbon cable underneath, in fact two ribbon cables underneath that plug into the flight controller. So there's our flight controller, uh, as you see one of the cables has come out of the plastic socket even though it's of great care. Uh, it's handy, it's got a arrow on it so you know which way to put it back in should you need to change one of these out or break one. Not a whole lot to see again underneath. Um, a lot of this machine is all integrated into the main board underneath. Uh, let's see how easy it is to get the VTX off should you blow this uh, VTX. It looks like it's pretty modular and it's actually just going to come straight out. Yeah, there we go. So we've got the 5.8, 350 milliwatts. So that's quite handy that that just plugs in and out. You know, if you forget to plug your antenna onto here and you go and blow this up, at least you uh, can swap it over quite easily. And just have a quick look underneath here. Not much to see in there. Immersion RC Vortex Power Board, version 1.3. So let's see how easy it will be to replace an ESC on the Vortex. I'm going to start with this one here, in fact I'll only do this one, um, obviously they don't need replacing so we'll just see how hard it is. Uh, I've removed the tab which is here, I'll zoom in so you can see this. So as you can see uh, we've got this little tab here which I've pulled out of here and all we have to do is unsolder the positive and negative. That will release the whole arm 
uh, from the Vortex. So, got my solder and iron ready. Let's have a little go at this. There we go, removed. So that's our arm removed. Now, I think it would be kind of useful if you could carry a whole one spare ready to go. So if you had a spare motor, these things will break. You'll bend shafts, you'll break arms, you'll break any of these pieces. ESC could fail. So if you're out in the field, it would be a little bit easier if you had a whole one arm ready to go. Um, I know you'll have to carry a soldering iron with you, but... Uh, there's plenty of portable ones out there now that run off a small uh, bit of gas from a, a gas lighter. So let's see if we can just uh, push this through. Looks like some of the carbon may come off. There we go. Now if we have a look down the tube, let's see if I can angle this correctly. You can see it's scraped in there a little bit and some of the carbon has actually come off. So I'll have to clean that up. That's all unfreaded itself slightly. So the speed controllers are really small in this. Obviously they've calculated how much uh, power the machine's going to pull and what it's going to lift. Not many modifications are going to be done to it, so they can stick to uh, very tight tolerances in size and uh, power. So the ESCs uh, will just about work. Let's see if it's easy to thread back in. Yeah, that, that was pretty much painless to push, push that back in. Um, the shielding is loose on the end, uh, which is meant to be, I'm assuming. That is just to protect during the opening and closing of the arms. Now one thing to be careful with is there's a lot of plastic on this machine. So if you're coming too close with the solder and iron, there is a potential there for you to melt something. Maybe one of these C-clips or something. It's important to remember to put this uh, tensioner back in, otherwise uh, that modular video transmitter could come out with vibrations. So you need to push it in like so and uh, get the tension back down on it. So getting that tensioner in there is a little bit tricky, but um, I don't know if you could see how I've done it. Uh, put the screw in the top lightly and push the tensioner in so that the screw would then fall through the hole and I can just screw it in. So the vortex is now back together. Uh, there is two screws underneath the vibration mount here which are a little bit hard to get at. So uh, I actually took the clips off so that I could remove the isolation mount, well at least take the two front ones off and lift it up so I can get to the two screws that are underneath here. Unfortunately uh, you can't get the screw uh, through these slots here uh, whilst it's on the screwdriver to get it in there so it's a little bit fiddly um, but these come off quite easily anyway the uh, pins and the c-clips and you do get spares of these in that bag that I showed you before so it's just a simple case of pushing that through spin it over and add the C-clip onto the bottom. Also supplied in that bag are these U-shaped brackets here that you can see. They are actually replaceable, uh, it looks like landing skids, so should you uh, land on the concrete and snap one of these off, then it's simply just one screw to replace this U-shape here, which is quite handy I suppose, so you don't have to replace a whole bottom bracket here on this motor. I'm not sure I like the connections here, as you can see there's quite a large gap um, that screw could um, unfred against the thread 
that's been made on it quite easily because it is only uh, red plastic. So that will be put to the test during the test flight. You can see it's also the same on the other side. Bit of a gap there. I would have liked the tolerances to have been a little bit closer. So the whole Vortex is coming in at 353.1 grams. So we'll see what our all up weight is once I've got my receiver, my uh, signal converter and GoPro on board. So that's all there is to see today on the Immersion RC Vortex. Unfortunately, I can't do much more uh, than what you've already seen because the signal converter hasn't arrived yet uh, from the company of which I bought it from. So uh, in my next video about this, uh, we will actually get out and do some test flying. Um, if you would like to see my process of setup, then I can do that. Um, there is already a video done out there by uh, Oh My Guard, who is one of the, uh, I think I've said that right, Oh My Guard. Uh, he was one of the beta testers for this and he's done a bit of a setup video on it. But it'd be nice to see um, if I come across any problems when I'm actually setting it up uh, real time for the first time myself. So I think I, I might go ahead and do that anyway. So that's all for today. Thanks for watching guys. Don't forget to subscribe and stick around. Uh, there's plenty more to come. Thank you. Bye.